now you need to look at counters. So counters are just under our timer operations and we have a couple of different counters that we can use. So we have a counter that counts up and a counter that counts down. And then we have a counter that can count up and down, but basically we're just going to focus on the up and down counter. So we drag it in a very similar way to the timers. Again, counters hold information. They hold kind of ultimately the value of the count that you're currently on. So it needs to be that data needs to be stored somewhere. So that's why we're creating this block. Um, but let's just say counter, we'll just call it counter one. Um, so it puts um, the counter in into our ladder on the rung. And again, we've got a certain amount of ports that we can connect into. In a similar way, we've got the, the CU. This refers to the count up, and this is our input into our counter. And ultimately, what triggers a counter? Um, so let's say if you wanted to call this, um, even if you wanted to say how many times the system had to go under an emergency stop or something like that, I don't know. And um, the E stop can feed into our system. All right, there's an input that's going to feed into our system. That gives it, allows it to count up every time that is triggered. And then we've got PV, which is a preset value. And all you have to do is type in um, an integer in here, a number. So once it counts up to 10, then it's going to turn on our output, which is at Q. Um, let's say it turns on a big red light. Okay. We've got the CV value again, this current value of our counter. Um, so again, we can just give it, give it a variable name and define it, allow it to force it somewhere that they will save it and that they're happy with. Because again, if you want to display this information on HMI or something like that, it'll be useful. But really, we're just using some good practice by putting in a value for that there at the moment. Um, don't worry too much about it. The OR, the OR port is we can give an input in order to reset our system. Okay, um, and let's say the start button resets our system. So let's talk about this a wee bit further. When the e stop gets triggered, power will flow into the counter, right, and it'll become energized. When the e stop is released, the counter is no longer energized. That implies one count has been reached. The input must come on and come off to get a count. So it must be pulsed, turn on and turn off. And that will be one count. So it'll count to one. Your current value will go to one. When that happens, when that gets pulsed, the e stop gets pulsed to the preset value 10 times, this counter again becomes fully energized and it will power the red LED. Now that red LED will stay on no matter if the power is lost here from the e-stop or if it's continued to be pressed. The red LED stays on. The only way to get the red LED to come off is to hit our reset button, so to hit our start button. That will reset our count back to zero and allow us to count up again. Now let's say we pulse our e-stop four or five times and we hit the reset button. That will put our count back to zero. So, you know, examples where we use that may be we're working on a line, we're halfway through a process, so a fault happens and we need to set it back to the start. So we want to need to set all our counters back to zero so that the system can operate fully again. Okay, otherwise it might only do half of sequence or something like that. So the reset can, you know, if there's an interrupt, it can bring it back down to zero. But also when it gets over 10, what happens is, even if this e stop is still triggering, it'll count up 11, 12, 13, 14, it'll keep counting upwards. And ultimately, it'll never reach the number 10 again because it's just constantly going up. So that's why we always need to reset our counter back down to zero so it can count up to 10 again. And ultimately, our cycles can be repeatable. Very similar for our countdown timer. Again, we'll give it, um, we'll just call it counter 2. Um, and it's got very similar um, ports that we can connect into. We have got an input that will help count us down. Um, so let's say the toggle switch, every time that's triggered, we'll count down. We'll count down a pre from a preset value of, say, 16. So we'll go 16 to 0. We'll turn on 
let's say our green LED for the sake of argument and again that current value um, we can call it count to just for the moment again we're not really worried about it we're just storing that somewhere that can be put there what we've got in here is LD it's very similar to our OR that we've seen with the count up what LD stands for is load okay and what it does again it, it it's a similar idea that it resets our system but ultimately what we do is it loads the number 16 back into our counter because you remember we're counting down so every time the toggle switch is pulsed again it has to be pulsed go on and off we're counting from 16 then to 15 14 13 12 when we get to zero this will become energized or less than zero comes energized when we get our 16th pulse comes energized if we hit the start button again, that'll keep counting down and down um, forever. So we need to get it loaded back up to 16, get the count loaded back up to 16 so we can count down to zero again. So that's what the load does. It loads 16 back into the counter so we can count down again. Basically, just resetting it, doing the same idea as we've seen up here with the counter up. So hopefully um, you've grasped all that. Again, with counters, timers, and or um, normally open, normally close, latching, with all them types of tools, we can do quite a lot already with our code and we can design some sophisticated systems um, for in industrial use. And, you know, these tools that we're using um, of code, pieces of code, knowing how timers work, knowing how latching works, knowing those bits of tools, it's, you know, up to your creativity to how you piece them together in order to get them to work. So some very good stuff um, that we've covered so far um, and hopefully you're getting a grasp of it.